This tutorial is Unity game development and scripting for the absolute beginner. And what I mean by beginner is you haven't even downloaded Unity yet. And so the first thing I'm going to do is Google for that. I'm going to find the Unity website. And then I'm just going to say get Unity and pick the free one probably. Or I could pay for it. Um, and if I have already downloaded it or if I just want to get the free version, skip all that, just scroll to the bottom, click the download button, and here you are. Another good way to do that is to say Unity Download Archive, and that way you can just see what all the versions are. Currently, I can see the current version is 5.61, which was released um, on this date. And you could hit this uh, Choose Your Download, look at the release notes so you know what's going on if you're experienced in unity but let's pick which one to click here now the best one to click is the unity installer rather than to pick the 64-bit version um, because it lets you select what build targets you want to build to and uh, let's take a look at that really quick and so again I prefer the um, installer over the flat out 64-bit version because here we could select our version. I'm selecting 64-bit. And this is the reason why. Depending on what devices you want to build to, you're going to need to install those playback engines. And for me, I want to be able to build to Android. I don't have iOS, so I don't need that. I don't care about tvOS myself. Um, or Linux or Mac build. Uh... Um, these are these are great if I'm making a PC game. So you're gonna have to pick which, you know, if you want a Windows Store, the Samsung TV, the Tizen, WebGL. Uh, for me, I primarily am doing Android and and some web development. Um, now I can do a standalone export to Windows, which builds an EXE, and that's really nice. So. Um, for me, I'm going to select Android. I'm going to select WebGL. And, however, if I was building a game for Steam, in addition to my standalone EXE, I would probably want Linux build support and Mac build support. So select what you need, and then you're going to select Next. And here we're going to put the path. Now, I prefer to name it this way because you can install multiple versions of Unity. You can see here I'm already uh, running a version of Unity and I could check my uh, Unity version, it's 5.4.2, so I have an older version of Unity here. That's fine and that would be in a, in a version uh, in a folder like 5.4.2, but here this is Unity version 5.6.1.f1, so I could say 5.6.1.f1 and I'm going to install it into that folder. That way, when I look at my uh, C drive program files, um, I'll have multiple Unity installations. And ideally, I wouldn't just have a regular old Unity folder. I specify which install I'm using. And the Unity is installing. So that's going to take a little while because it has to download and install everything. But it's all done, so I'm going to say launch Unity. And it's going to ask for network access. So I'm going to say, okay, now this it would be empty if you haven't done anything yet. So I'm going to make a new project. And I put mine in the documents folder under a master folder called Unity 5 where all my projects go into. So we'll just call this uh, a scripting tutorial for 561. And I've got an uh, update here that says that there's a new version of Unity, my currently installed version of 561F1, and the new version is 561F1, so <laughs> never mind. We're going we're gonna to just say uh, skip that new version. I'm, I'm already using it. Now my, my windows are set up a little funny here, so I'm going to click on the layout and I'm going to say default. So my, de so my layout should look uh, just like the default Unity layout does. And this is the regular Unity. Now, concerning the folder structure that we used, remember I set it to my documents, Unity 5. So, in the Unity 5 folder, we'll find that folder name that I typed, which was uh, Tutorial Scripting 561. So, when I typed that Unity project name in, it created a folder with that same name. And, of course, the folder that I told it to. And there's some folders here that are 
that Unity uses, your project settings, the library folder, the temp folder, and then there's the, the one that you're going to be real familiar with, which is your assets folder. You'll notice that this folder name is the same as this one here. So if I uh, double click on this, my assets is empty. I have none. And uh, of course, here in this assets folder, there are none because this is a completely blank project. Now, the first thing that we're going to look at is a game object. So I'm going to click on the uh, hierarchy here. I'm going to say create and I'm going to say create empty. And what it means by empty is it's going to create an empty game object. So by default in a Unity scene, you'll already have a camera and a directional light. Uh, so what I've created here is a game object, and that's located right here. Um, I can move it with these handles. But what is a game object? Let's take a quick look at that. So I'm on the Unity documentation, and this is the manual. There's also the scripting API. And we're looking at the game object and it says game objects are fundamental objects in unity that represent characters props and scenery and a lot more actually they do not accomplish much in themselves but they act as containers for components which implement the real functionality for example a light object is created by attaching a light component to a game object and a simple cube game object with several components on it and a solid cube object has a mesh filter, a mesh render component to draw the surface of the cube, and a box collider component to represent the object's solid vol volume in terms of physics. So let's take a look at how that works in Unity. We've already created a, a game object by clicking Create Empty, and now I have two of them. All game objects are going to have a transform, and the transform component lets you set the position in the world, and you'll notice that changes, of course, if I move it, the rotation. And we can move these values by clicking here and dragging, or this, the scale so for the size of it. So all game objects will have a transform, and then you can add other components to it. And you do that by clicking Add Components. And let's take a look at a component real quick to see what a component is. Components are the nuts and bolts of objects and behaviors in a game. They are the functional pieces of every game object and if you don't yet understand the relationship between components and game objects read the game objects page before going any further that's going to take us back to here and a game object is a container for many different components by default all game objects automatically have a transform component this is because the transform dictates where the game object is located how it's rotated and scaled with the transform component the game object wouldn't have a location in the world without the transform component it wouldn't have a location in the world so try creating an empty game object as an example and so that's what we've done already and now let's look at adding components you can add components to the selected game object to the components menu we'll tr try this by adding a rigid body to an empty game object uh, that we created so let's get into that now and look at adding um, components but before we do that let's look at what is in the scene already we have a main camera that comes with the transform but it also has a component called a camera so if I wanted to I could click add component type camera and I could see that there's that component that of course is already added to your main camera it also has a GUI layer component a flare layer and an audio listener now we're not going to get into what exactly these are all doing right now we're just looking at how game objects and components work um, so for the main camera to work in the game it has the camera component and it's using these other components as well the directional light has the transform so it has its place in the world and then it has the light component uh, which I could add to any game object like this and uh, it has its value set up so it's acting as a light now we have an empty game object that only has a transform so it only has a position it's not doing anything else but let's create a new 3d object and click cube now that's going to create a new cube here which is a game object of itself and the name of, of this game object is called cube I could rename it to something else like cube 01 and we're going to know it has a transform because all game objects do. And it has a mesh filter component. 
uh, with the mesh set to cube that gives it this shape. It has a box collider, which gives it a the physics bound, and it has the mesh renderer, which uh, which draws the box so that we can see it. And so with these three components or four, I, I guess that represents a 3D cube in the game that you could see and actually interact with physics-wise uh, because it has a uh, box collider on it. So if we were to hit the play button to play the game right now, nothing would happen except for it's going to show us a view through this camera and it just so happens that the camera, I could see it's pointing the frustrum here shows us it's pointing at the box so of course when I hit play I see the box and that's all that happens in the game so to make something happen just like the documentation was saying we could add components and we're gonna add this rigid body which gives it a physics mass and that also allows it to respond to gravity so I'm gonna type rigid and rigid body pops up so I'm going to add a rigid body component to the cube. And now I'm going to press play. And what's going to happen is that cube is going to fall. And it's going to keep falling forever. Uh, because there's nothing for it to, there's no ground here. So it just falls forever. And that rigid body added the mass so that it responds to gravity, as you can see here. So let's give this cube something to bounce into. I'm going to create a 3D object for a plane. And I want that plane to be at 0, 0, 0 in the world, which is right at the middle. And another way to achieve that is to click the gear icon and say reset. That puts the transforms positions all to 0 with a 1, 1, 1 on the scale. So now there's a ground here. And if I were to press play we'll see that the cube's going to fall onto the ground. So this is done because the cube game object has components which make it visible. That's with the mesh renderer. And they make it respond to gravity and have mass. That's with the rigid body. And the final type of component to implement our own logic into this game is with custom scripts so I can add scripts and that's essentially what the rigid body is what the light is they're built-in scripts essentially so a lot of the really hard math and physics and programming is already done when and that's part of the unity engine it has scripting APIs for stuff like a physics engine and scripting APIs for, for lights and for all the basic stuff that you need to do in a game. Um, so m most of the hard work, the math, the programming, is already done. And all we need to do is put in our own logic, just what we want the game to do. Do we want the box to fall to the ground or, or do we want it to, to bounce up and down? Um, or maybe this is an enemy who, who attacks us. So that type of logic is done via scripting and in Unity we can add logic to any game object uh, through scripting. So we do that with C sharp scripts and adding a custom um, component and we can actually make our own components uh, via C sharp scripting. It's really easy and again the, all the hard math and whatnot is pretty much done. We just have to put our own logic in. So I'm going to show how to add our own custom C Sharp scripts and put that logic into the game in the next video. We're going to do that. So stay tuned. Give it a like if this one helped you. And I'll see you guys in the next video so we can actually make a script.